get on right on to uh, item number 10, conduct of business. Uh, first item, if you want to stay, you're welcome to. If not, you can leave. I'll, I'll wait a minute. I understand someone, there was a little confusion here. Someone else had something to say under public comment that's not on this agenda. If you'd like to address us now, uh, please. yeah, sure, please. Thank you. Oh, it is? Uh, oh, parking. Well, let, let's do it under item 10C, which has to do with parking in the Caltrain station in the vicinity, okay? I'll, I'll call you up. Item 10A, conduct of business receiver report on the Federal Emergency Management Agency San Francisco Bay Coastal Study for the City of San Bruno. Good, good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. The topic in front of you today is in regards to the FEMA Coastal Flood Hazard Study. This presentation is being provided for information and includes a summary of the work in progress, the results of the detailed hydraulic analysis performed by City's consultant. A little and closer, Jimmy. Thank you. And the results of the flood, flooding, if mitigation measures were applied. FEMA conducted the coastal flood hazard study for various counties throughout California to determine the revised flood elevation and flood hazard areas for coastal communities. San Mateo County is one of the counties that was included in the FEMA study. The results of the flood hazard study for San Bruno identified many residential properties in Bel Air neighborhood as well as Bear Elementary School being inundated by potential flooding. Approximately 460 homes are affected. The impact is significant since these residents will be required to purchase flood insurance if they have a federally backed mortgage or loans once the flood maps are deemed effective by FEMA. Back in October of last year, FEMA re requested all agencies in San Mateo County to provide comments on their draft flood insurance rate maps. The city completed this work through the help of a consulting firm, Moffitt & Nickel, which the city contracted to provide technical assistance. Staff came back to council uh, early this year in May to recommend authorizing a contract with Moffitt & Nickel to perform additional hydraulic analysis that provided more realistic, detailed information. And this hydraulic analysis was completed last month, and the results of the additional analysis shows a significant reduction in flooding within Barra neighborhood and even greater reductions if mitigations were completed. And last month, FEMA issued the preliminary flood insurance rate maps to all the agencies in San Mateo County for review. Uh, this slide shows the extent of the flooding from the bay into San Bruno uh, based on FEMA's analysis. Uh, the area in blue are considered to be flooded, which includes the San Francisco airport. Moffitt and Nickel used uh, FEMA's information to evaluate the flooding and determine three potential sources that impacts the city. The, the first source is due to the non-accredited tide gate structure at the end of San Bruno Channel where stormwater discharges into San Francisco Bay. Since it's a non-accredited structure, FEMA doesn't take that into consideration in the model and assume it doesn't exist. So water is assumed to flow from the bay through the channel and floods the neighborhood. The second source is the flood water from the bay that flows through San Francisco Airport across the freeway and into San Bruno. Although the airport levees exist, they are currently non-accredited. FEMA again doesn't take the levees into account in their model and is currently showing the airport as being flooded, which is uh, shaded in blue. The third source is the overtopping of the south bank of the navigable slough in South San Francisco uh, due to deficient elevation. The slough in South San Francisco is a short segment of waterway that branches off the end of the uh, Coma Creek. The south bank of the slough elevation is low and water is assumed to, be, to come in from the bay and over top the bank, then comes down Shaw Road towards uh, San Bruno. The flooding impact in San Bruno is shown inside the red oval. A majority of the residents in the Barrow neighborhood and the elementary school and area near the 7th and Walnut are shown to be flooded. Moffitt and Nickel perform a similar hydraulic analysis like FEMA, but with a little more detail, uh, and the results is a bit different from FEMA's model. Um, the evaluation that Moffitt and Nickel perform include a time duration of the flood events where FEMA model is static and doesn't take 
into account the time duration of the, uh, the tide. So they assume an infinite amount of water coming in, but nothing, you know, is going back out. Uh, FEMA applied a simple mapping methodology that any area under the flood elevation would be flooded. Uh, in San Bruno, they determined the flood elevation to be 10.4 feet. Uh, and any, any properties that are under 10.4 feet is considered to be flooded. However, with a more detailed model that takes into account the tide duration, uh, there's a reduction in number of properties that are affected by flooding. A majority of the residents and uh, Bear Elementary School are, is out of the flood zone, as you can see here on this map. There's still some flooding within the 7th and uh, Warner area, uh, up on the, um, the top here. This slide shows a comparison between the two models. Um, the results for, of both models are overlapped on top of one another. FEMA's model results is shown in uh, light blue and brown. And Moffitt and Nichols results are shown in green and yellow. Um, here's a, a larger scale of the, uh, the area. And in comparison between the two models, uh, there's a great reduction in flooding uh, impacts. Uh, flood water from Moffitt and Nichols evaluation doesn't flow far west. Uh, as shown in FEMA's model for the Bear Air neighborhood area. However, the uh, com comparison of the flooding area near the 7th and Walnut is very comparable to uh, the FEMA's analysis. Um, Moffat Nickel also evaluated whether there would be any additional flood reduction if mitigation measures were applied. Um, two significant mit mitigation measures were evaluated, uh, both of which are within the, uh, the county's uh, jurisdiction. As mentioned earlier, one source of flooding is the tide gate structure at the end of San Bruno Channel. Since the tide gate is you know, not accredited, water is assumed to flow into the channel and into San Bruno. This slide shows the result if the tide gate is assumed uh, to be certified and credited in accordance with FEMA's guidelines. And its accreditation requires review of the structure to ensure it meets FEMA's requirement. Um, the result shows a bit more reduction in the Bear Air neighborhood. Flooding within the neighborhood would be almost eliminated, as you can see uh, here. My cursor doesn't show. Sorry. Um, here's a uh, side by side of the flooding area. The right oval shows the flooding without any mitigation, and the left shows with the mitigation of the tide gate structure. So you can see the, uh, the various difference between the, uh, the flooding impacts in the Bear, Bear neighborhood. And since the tide gate belongs to the county, staff is coordinating with the county to look into the accreditation of the structure. And the county will be hiring Moffitt and Nicole and is currently reviewing the scope of work to get the structure uh, accredited. The, um, as mentioned earlier, the flooding in the 7th and Walnut areas contributed by low elevations at the south bank of the the slough uh, coming down Shaw Road and into San Bruno. There's currently a box covert underneath the South Airport Boulevard at the, uh, the slough. And this model scenario assumes the flap gate, you know, can be installed on existing box to prevent further uh, water from coming into the, uh, from the bay and into the slough. And this model also assumes that the Kai gate structure is accredited. Uh, the, the result shows an even more reduction uh, of the flooding impacts in San Bruno. The flooding area near the 7th and Warner areas is you know, substantially reduced uh, in this um, analysis. And if the mitigation measures of installing a, a flap gate on existing bo box cover provides benefits to both uh, city of South San Francisco and uh, San Bruno, majority of the industrial and commercial areas in South San Francisco will also be out of the flood zone uh, as well. And for San Francisco, almost all of the residents in the 7th and Warner area will be out of the the, uh, the flood area. As for our next step, since the additional results from Moffin and Nicole depicted a significant change in the flood inundation areas in San Bruno, staff believes that an appeal to FEMA is, uh, should be considered. Uh, FEMA has indicated that the city can submit an appeal uh, with the new analysis for the review. However, we will not know the results of the appeal until FEMA you know, has an opportunity to review all of the materials that we submit. And staff has already requested Moffin and Nickel to file a proposal to assist with submitting an appeal to FEMA for, and further evaluation of these mitigation measures. And we anticipate bringing this item back to council in uh, October. Then an appeal package that includes the supporting data of the hydraulic analysis will be submitted to FEMA for consideration. And staff will continue to co coordinate with the county for accreditation of the tie gate stretcher. 
and county's help is needed as this structure is owned by the county. And then staff will also coordinate with South San Francisco and the county regarding the navigable slough. And if the slough mitigation is, um, can be achieved, there are definitely benefits for uh, both agencies. As for the remaining schedule, many tasks have been uh, completed by FEMA. FEMA recently issued the preliminary you know, flood insurance rate maps in uh, August. And in December, FEMA will be performing a uh, federal register publication. And this consists of advertising in a lo local newspaper twice before the uh, appear, appeal period uh, begins. The appeal period is between um, January 2016 through uh, March 2016. However, FEMA suggested that cities can submit appeals early uh, so there's adequate time for back and forth comments before the appeal, appeal date uh, ends. Then FEMA will issue um, a letter of final map determination in August uh, 2016. This is the first step to let the community know that the new or updated flood insurance rate maps will become effective within the next six months. And the letter also notifies each uh, effective community that uh, it must adopt a compliant flood plain management ordinance uh, by the effect map uh, you know, effective uh, date. And six months after that, the new maps will be adopted in February 2017. Then that's when the flood insurance will be required for properties that are shown within the flood zone map uh, if the residents and businesses have the, uh, the federal, federally regulated or insured um, lender. So with that, I'll take any uh, questions you may have. Any questions for Jimmy? Ken? So I'm just going to ask, I guess, the big question. What is mitigate? What is that going to be? I mean. You obviously said that you have uh, an argument for the slough and the tide gate that would virtually eliminate flooding in San Bruno. Uh, is that just doing more study and having the consultant uh, argue that uh, the facilities there are, are sufficient? I don't, I don't understand why FEMA doesn't consider it that it exists. You know, is it as simple as just saying it exists and so there won't be a flood. Uh, and then also, I just have a, a question uh, as far as financing. Is, it says that Moffin and Nickel has been, ha, you know, has a con we have a contract with Moffin and Nickel. So is it, are they, is, is the appeal included in that? And, you know, with this uh, additional hydraulic analysis and what would that be? And then also, is, are we looking at I know we're, we're considering coordinating with South San Francisco. Is co South San Francisco sharing in a cost with, uh, with the consultant? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. So, so for, the, for the first question regarding the, whether or not the, the tie gate structure uh, is there or any structure is there, and it is there, but FEMA does not take that into account uh, because it's not an accredited structure. And similar to the, all of the, uh, the flood walls that are around the perimeter of the San Francisco airport, you know, it doesn't meet the FEMA's requirement for high elevations for this new study, so they don't, you know, it's, it's, um, it's deficient to their standards. So that needs to be um, improved in, in, you know, and, in, and meets the elevations that they, they require, uh, and plus the free boards. And so in order to have that structure to be, um, um, pr to protect the, uh, the inland. And in regards to the, um, the appeal process for, for uh, Moffin and Nicole, the Currently, we have, you know, we went to, with Moffin Nickel for two contracts. Uh, this third contract that we are going to be getting a proposal for will be coming back in, in October for, um, to, you know, for this additional work for the appeal process and, and to, look at, you know, the ex to look at more extent of these mitigation measures for these two uh, locations for the slough and then the tie gate. If I could just follow up, you say mitigate and we say studies and everything, and now you're saying improving. So please let us know what a mitigate may entail. You know, does it mean major construction costs in, in you know, in, in improving uh, the sloth or improving this tide gate? Or is it simply providing, you know, uh, analysis that, and proof that it will withstand the, you know, the flood and hold back that area? So. Yeah, it's, it's both because, um you know, it has to meet the FEMA's requirements, you know, for, so with regards to the elevation. So with the temp, you know, they have specific requirements for freeboard, and so survey needs to be done at the tie gate structure to ensure that it meets their, you know, elevation requirements, and it has to be structurally sound as well. And uh, that needs to be evaluated as part of the, uh, the, um, the process. 
You asked a question earlier about uh, whether we were sharing the cost of the Moffat Nickel contract with South San Francisco, and the answer to that is no. That analysis that's been to, to date has been done, done strictly by and for the benefit of the City of San Bruno and, and its um, projected inundation issues as mapped by FEMA. The, um, what we are working with South San Francisco and with the County of San Mateo about is the mitigation measures that um, the uh, uh, city engineer has just discussed. There are um, very specific actions that mitigate or, or, or improvements that will mitigate or we, uh, we believe will mitigate um, at least a portion of the flooding uh, potential here in San Bruno. Those uh, improvements also benefit the city of South San Francisco. We're not here to talk to you about their FEMA mapping issues, but they have similar issues from similar sources in their community, um, mostly relative to the industrial area in the eastern part of South San Francisco. So the next contract that we're talking about as well that we expect to bring back to you in October um, will again, uh, we expect, be a, um, uh, work effort that is uniquely for the benefit of San Bruno having to do with the appeal. At, at, what, at what point, I, I know it, I asked this when it first came up, we've, we've got some property owners out there who potentially will get really surprised that they'll have to purchase flood insurance. So at what point is there a plan to get them into the conversation and, you know, not to scare them, but uh, let them know that we're, you know, we're working for them. Right, you know, the city can choose to do public outreach right now uh, to the residents, but, you know, however, since the map, we're still in the preliminary stages. Um, you know, FEMA recommends, you know, that you want to wait until the, uh, the final um, map, letter of final you know, map determination is, you know, comes out first. So then that's when the, the final map you know, will be issued within the next six months after. Part of the information that we're providing you tonight is deliberately intended to, to get word out there. So we've been keeping the city council via the public meeting uh, updates to you. This is the third one we've done in the last six months is intended to provide um, basic information to members of the public. We also have some generic, uh, a box full of uh, right there on oh, the table too. We have them on the table um, information about the FEMA flood mapping um, process and the uh, potential insurance requirements um, we would propose to begin making that available uh, in a just making them available through City Hall and other sources through the city and then um, continuing to work with FEMA uh, to develop the, pub the, the more formal uh, public meeting and public outreach uh, approach that we expect to have FEMA um, available to do presentations so that our residents can get information straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. I'd like to suggest that we at least get them a postcard to the property owners that this is happening and that there is pamphlets and information available that they can pick up other than you know, delivering it directly because I know there's rental properties out there and so a lot of the property owners might not be uh, on site but I we've got to let them know there's you said there's about 400 properties about 460 properties yes. thank you good anyone else on this Irene uh, thank you. Uh, I understand your frustration, Ken. I was at uh, several of the meetings with FEMA, and they, they were frustrated as well because they have to go by the prescription of what their regulations say. So even though you can point to the structure and say it works and it's never been flooded before, they have to ignore it if they haven't certified it themselves. I see we have county people here, and if you want to... <laughs> I see if somebody else wants to go up, too. Um, I'd like to hear from you all what the county is doing since some of this is uh, county responsibility and if you have a timeline for the accreditation of the uh, tide gates and something about the Colma Creek Advisory Committee. 
Certainly, through the chair. My name is Jim Porter. I'm the director of public works for San Mateo County. Uh, we've been working with um, your staff to look at our tide gate, the tide gate that is owned by the San Bruno Flood Control District. We're in discussions with Moffitt and Nickel right now to uh, get a scope of work to first look at the structure itself and find out what it would take to certify that structure. And I think, as Mr. Tan pointed out, there are geotechnical and structural aspects of the structure that need to be evaluated. In addition, they need to look at the elevations of the uh, land around it so that, it, you know, even if our tide structure meets their certification requirements, we've got to make sure the water doesn't creep around the sides of the tide gates. So uh, just to answer your question, we have received a draft proposal from Moffat and Nickel. We're currently working with them on the detailed scope of work and cost estimates. With that preliminary uh, scope, uh, unfortunately, we did not receive a schedule with that. Um, based on that type of work, though, once we execute an agreement, it typically takes somewhere between four to six months to complete a study like that. Once the preliminary study is done, where we need, we basically find out what we need to do to certify the structure itself, then we would go into uh, the next phase, which is construction documents. And it's really hard to talk about what that would be without first knowing what needed to be fixed. Um, you know, we all hope that that structure is certifiable as is, but we need to go through the analysis and uh, determine if it is or not before we can really uh, proceed. That's where we're at. I have to ask you, we kind of came to this late um, because we weren't informed, because we've never been in a flood control a flood area before, which is what we were told. But didn't the county know ahead of time? I mean, didn't you know before us? No? Okay. Well, we knew about two weeks before you. All uh, right. We found out that San Bruno <laughs> was not notified of this. Uh, Supervisor Pine, uh, I believe, noticed that San Bruno had not been notified. Oh, I'm and sorry. I'm not asking the right question. Didn't the county know before the cities that your tide gate was under question? I mean, no. No, you, they didn't tell you that either? No, we were notified at the same time as the cities. Okay. So this all came out very quickly. At the very same time. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, okay. I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you, but go oh, ahead. No worries. No, I, I was actually done. I'd be happy to answer any questions I could. Any questions? Okay, well. It's uh, the, the question, uh, yes. any floods in those areas? Certainly through the mayor. Uh, you know, I am not aware of any tidal flooding, and these maps are really a tidal, uh, tidally influenced flood. The flooding that we see is, is what we call riverine flooding, which is flooding that occurs from rainfall that comes downstream. Um, but I, in my 20-some-odd um, years around here, I've never seen tidal flooding. Um, I know that uh, there, is, there is work being done right now on sea level rise, um, but that in and of itself is... A, a gentleman called it uh, being run over by a turtle. You know it's coming, but it's coming slow. So um, we have not seen anything from tidal flooding. What we have seen, though, is if you have a high tide event and a big storm event, uh, the channels around here have trouble passing the water onto the bay. Um, that has occurred in Belmont, uh, in fact, in the Belmont Creek. There is no tide gate there. But in your area, I'm not aware of any tidal flooding. I, I have to say I was born in that area on 5th Avenue, across from 7th Avenue, and my family's lived in that area for 80, 70 years, and they've never had it either. But FEMA doesn't care. So we're out of luck that way. Just one final comment. Um, your city engineer was correct. When FEMA does these evaluations, they don't really take into account the cyclical nature of tides. And it's just a very conservative portion of their analysis. In reality, that's not the way the world works. I mean, tides come up, tides come down. And I think what Moffat and Nickel pointed out was, as these tides rise, um, water can only pass in so quickly, and there's resistance from the land to the point where I think practically uh, the extent of the flooding will not be what you see in those tidal maps. However, FEMA is extremely conservative, and when they put out those maps, they want to make sure that if there's ever a possibility that these people are notified of this risk. And so that's, that's again, been our experience with these FEMA flood control maps, or tidal maps, I'm sorry. Okay. Anything else? All right, thank you for the report.
can keep an eye on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, my name is Michael Barber. I work for Supervisor Dave Pine. I um, just want to sort of cover the political part. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's covered all the engineering part. Just wanted you to know that he, Supervisor Pine, as Irene knows, um, and myself have been very engaged with this. We've been working closely with your staff to uh, mitigate this as much as possible. We've also worked, had contracts with Moffat and Nickel as well. And uh, I, I just wanted to highlight that that part about the mitigation portion that you were asking about, um, Councilmember um, what what they're what they're trying to prove to FEMA is is the point that he talked. Hydrologically, it's it's just not possible, and that's the first phase. It doesn't require any construction. It's just making the case that hydrologically this doesn't make sense, and that's that's what uh, I believe. You're primarily going to be coming to the council for, and that's that's the appeal process. There is that small component that he showed that will require some physical work to be done, and for FEMA to recognize. Um, and but I just want you to know that the county is very engaged in this process, and we will assist you as much as we can. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Mayor, if I could just add that um, staff has very much appreciated the. Uh, collaboration with both the county uh, supervisor pines office he's he's the one as as you heard that um yeah, although we came or we were invited to the party late so to speak that it was via supervisor pines initiative that that brought that information to us and i would also only mention that um uh congresswoman spears office has also engaged themselves and has been very very helpful fema as you know as a federal agency um works to sometimes mystical federal standards. And um, so their interpretation and their uh, support and interpretation has been very helpful to us as well. Great, thank you.